what's going on everyone let's take a look at the nasdaq 100 futures chart so again you know we're in september contracts now so that's the reason for a little bit of a gap up today you can see us kind of gapping over this linear regression supply and you know the nasdaq and the bulls they just continue to float higher right so one thing that i kind of do want to point out is that you know, for as long as I've been doing this, you have to understand that when, when a market is pushing all-time highs, it makes it extremely difficult to kind of just continue to hop on the train, okay? Uh, what tends to happen with a lot of traders, especially intraday traders and scalpers, is they tend to want to pick the top, right? Market needs to pull back, goes higher. Well, who's buying the market up this much? short it goes higher so again this is just one constant slow moving kind of squeeze grind higher until we get some sort of pullback into some levels of demand that are you know i'm not talking about you know one two three red candles in a day like for for example even today we had a little bit of a sell-off into the close that's not really a sell-off right because when you look at it the NASDAQ 100 is trading over the Bollinger Band, over the linear regression, the five-day moving average, the 10-day moving average, the 20, the middle linear regression, and the 50. So the bulls are in 1,000 million percent in control of the chart, and it's going to take a lot from the sellers to kind of get this thing to go down. Now, if we want to see some type of significant back test, we're going to need to get below 19,885 and, and kind of fill this gap from the contract roll into 19,700. Anything below that would have room to 19,400, okay? Now, whether that happens or not, those would be the levels that you would need to be looking for if you're looking for that short position. Everything else needs to be a buy the dip kind of opportunity, right? If you, if you want to be an aggressive scalper and you want to try to scalp some of these down moves, you can most definitely do that, but you need to make sure that you're sized correctly. You need to make sure that you're kind of holding, uh, not holding positions, you know, for an all day type of reversal type of sell off. You know, if you kind of realistically look towards the end of the day here, we're looking at the five minute time frame. Uh, with about 25 minutes left of the market, we had a one two three four five six candle push down into the rising 50-day moving average again if you guys are following along the youtube channel or following along in discord you guys already know that you know this would be one of our setups here again hard to take right because the market was just grinding higher so it's kind of like you know if we take this position is there an opportunity we're going to get stopped out sure but there's always an opportunity that you're going to get stopped out on any setup in any market, uh, you know, environment. So all in all, if you kind of look at what we'd started to do off the bell, right? If I kind of go to the left, we had a little bit of a push down followed by a recovery and then a, a higher low back test on a five minute time frame. And then we kind of broke out of the first hour initial balance, which is that one hour trading range. And once we broke out of that and we got above this linear regression, we really never looked back, right? So there was no reason to start shorting here. Or there was no reason to start shorting on this red pullback or hell, even on this red pullback yet, right? I mean, again, of course, obviously, if you shorted the big red candle and you, and you held, you would have made some money. But, you know, what was telling you to start shorting here, you know? Because again, it was just a pullback into rising support, a pullback into rising support, a pullback into rising support. So all in all, you know, for a lot of newer traders and inexperienced traders, one thing that you guys tend to do a lot that I notice is try to, you know, you try to pick where the market's going up, where the market's going down instead of just going with the price action. Now, depending on the type of trader you are, you obviously need to have some sort of game plan in, in, in play. Um, I came into today with a game plan of I was looking for scalps, right? Especially being, you know, trading at and around all time highs. I don't have a whole lot of levels to the upside to kind of go off of. So I'm really not expecting an all day move like this. It's great that it happened. It made for some easy long positions. I took this long. I took this long. And where was that last one? This one here. Oh, actually, where was it at? Uh, I guess. It, oh, yeah. No, no, no. This one right here. All right. So. Again, or excuse me, on a two-minute time frame, there was one more setup. Because when I went to go to the two-minute time frame, just want to be clear and transparent with everyone. 
So today I was playing a two minute time frame. So we had this long setup. I did take one of those short setups off the open and it was this long setup here, right? I know you guys can't really see it that well, but literally, you know, I was I was talking to some of the guys on on and in, in gals in, in Discord and Evolution Traders, and I was in this play, and I took measly five points off the play. And this play continued to run up, you know, over a hundred points. So again, you know, silly me, eh, but my plan was to go in and try to scalp this market at five points at a time. Now, I believe all in all, I took close to 30, 35 points out of the market, which again, you know, playing one and two mini contracts is not a bad day, right? It's not really a bad day, but you have to just kind of go with the flow, right? There was so many traders trying to short again, you know, not my traders, but there was a lot of traders I seen on social media, you know, trying to pick this top and trying to pick this one and this one. And it's like, I get it. I see the thought process behind it. But until the market really proves to you that it's going to make a new low, and typically that's going to come from looking at the higher time frames, you got to continue to ride the trend. So you're looking for those buy the dip opportunities in this type of market environment. Now, if we look at the one hour chart, it's going to paint a little bit of a different story. If anything over uh, 20,271, definitely in the next long, right? But if we do start to lose, you know, going into the overnight session and pre-market, if we start to lose prices of 20,163, then we have our next support at 20,103. So maybe we got about a 50 point back test here. Anything below that could definitely come down to 20,040. And realistically, for me, it would still be a buy the dip opportunity until price gets down below 20,000. Okay. Um, I'll be looking for the pullbacks and looking for the reversal, looking for the pullbacks, looking for my, you know, two minute or five minute 20 SMA play. That's what I'll be looking for, quite frankly, until the market kind of has multiple, multiple days of either pullback or multiple, multiple days of going sideways and, and building up a level of consolidation and giving us some actual new floors to kind of play with and some new ceilings to play with. Because right now, with the way that the market's going, there's not a whole lot to go off of other than close your eyes, buy, hold on, and buy the dip, hold on, and buy the dip, and hold on. Again, once you start getting, you know, going back and forth, taking a short here and then getting back long and taking another short is when you're going to tend to chop yourself up a little bit. Again, I'm not telling you that there's not short opportunities intraday. There is. There's a couple of them. You know, especially a lot of them are coming early in the day session in the pre-market. They're coming, you know, in the first hour of, of the New York Open. And then the day's kind of establishing its range. Also, make sure you guys are keeping your eye on the initial balance. Once we start do, once we do start getting outside that initial balance, you're definitely going to want to try to stay with that trend. Okay. That's going to help you kind of eliminate a lot of back and forth. Again, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a brief overhaul here. I'm going to give you guys the weekly chart here if it ever wants to load. So if you look at the weekly chart again, disregard the gap. We're rolling those contracts over. But same thing on the weekly, 19,730, 19,243. Those would be our two weekly supports here. I could see the market pulling back into 19,100 at some point in time. That does not mean that this week I'm expecting the market to decline 1,000 points. Again, crazier things have happened. But if there was a little bit of a blow off top, if there was some, you know, exhaustion on this move, those would be the two firm areas of support where I'd be looking to restart those macro longs. But again, we're day traders, we're scalpers, we're really not looking for a potential set at 500 points down, 1,000 points down, right? So again, I just want to give you guys that macro view. The trend is higher ever since reclaiming the 20-day uh, moving average on a weekly time frame. And again, just kind of stick with, the, stick with the same bias, right? And you know, we can even look at a 15-minute time frame, right? If I was to look at the 15-minute time frame, well, notice the first 15-minute 20 SMA play off the bell. It was a 35-point range. Um, and then confirmed and then got stopped out. So you would have lost 35 points. Short position never never confirmed. However, your next trade of the day was a 30 point range that ended up running 200 points. So again, you know, if you're gonna hold a runner, always, always, always move your stop loss to break even and just hold on for dear life and ride this amazing bull uh, that is is on right now. So with that being said, I'll see all of you guys on the next video.